Thanks to Hover for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Two weeks ago, Apple released the long-awaited iOS 14. And while it's got lots of new bells and whistles we could talk about, today we're going to explore what I think is hands down the most useful productivity feature it has. So iOS 14 came out of beta just about a week or two ago, and I think most people would say the most exciting feature in iOS 14 is the ability to put widgets on your home screen and to customize them. I know my Android user friends have had this ability for years, and I'm sure there's gonna be some of the comments rubbing my nose in it, but personally, as somebody who's been using an iPhone since I think 2011 or 2012, this has been something that I have been wanting for a really, really long time. But as cool as this feature is as a whole, it wasn't really exciting enough for me to make a full video on it until I found out about the Shortcuts widget. So Shortcuts is an app that Apple bought from a third party developer a few years ago and integrated into iOS. And it essentially lets you create custom shortcuts to do a whole ton of different things. And personally, I'd never really played around with the Shortcuts app very much until I saw it in that list of widget options. But after playing with it over the weekend, after learning what it could do, after learning that it can actually create scripts and do lots of really cool custom stuff, I started getting that same mental rush that I get when I pull off a particularly complex Magic the Gathering and combo. I live for stuff like that and for stuff like this. So this is the home screen setup that I'm rocking right now. Like I said, I've got my screen time widget and my uh, exercise widget right here. But the real cool stuff lives here in the shortcuts widget on the home page. So first I've got a button for Notion and this was actually my inspiration for making this because Notion doesn't currently have a widget which I would love to see them make. But for now I can click this button and I have several different choices. I can go to my inbox, which I talked about in my Notion note taking video. This is my quick capture area where I can easily create a new note very, very quickly. Or I can go to the full notebook area if I wanna get into a specific notebook like content or music. Or I can go to my workspace here. So this is a custom workspace for myself that I've been developing. I can go down here and I can see all the different projects I have in progress across my business. All the videos I'm working on, the newsletters I need to write, I can go down here and see my editorial calendar. And I'm actually working on a course all about how teams and creators can use Notion. So if you're interested in getting updates about that and maybe even getting into a beta version that'll go live before the full price version, I'll have a link in the description down below where you can sign up for an email list to get updates. But secondly, we have a Spotify playlist thing. So often when I go to the gym, I wanna easily launch my workout playlist. I can do that from here and it'll instantly launch it, which is pretty cool. I've got a Slack DM button here. So I've got several people across different Slack workspaces who I DM on a daily basis. And it's kind of a pain to switch workspaces in the Slack app. So using deep Slack URL linking, I can open up say a DM with Tony basically instantly. Lastly, I've got record now, which just opens up the voice recorder app and starts recording immediately. So what I wanna do for the rest of this video is show you how to set this up. And hopefully this is gonna serve as both a tutorial for the Shortcuts app and also how to set up widgets in general. So to start this out, let's get a widget onto the home screen. You can hold down here uh, until you get this whole edit interface here. And I'm just gonna swipe over to a brand new home screen, hit this plus button and start searching for widgets. You got a ton of different choices here, but the Shortcuts one is gonna be near the bottom. So we'll grab that. And I'm just gonna go with one of these uh, four grid boxes here. You can do a really big one if you want. You can do a single one. I like this one. So we'll go with that. And right now it's just gonna show the top four shortcuts and my entire shortcuts app. So what we really wanna do is create a custom folder where we can choose which shortcuts are shown in this widget. So to do that, first we're gonna go to the shortcuts app itself and create a folder. Back here, I'll just create one called a demo for this purpose. And as soon as I add it, I can come back to this widget we've created. I can hold it for a second, hit edit widget, and then choose this demo folder. So right now it is gonna be empty, which means that we need to start populating it with shortcuts. So let's go back to that shortcuts app and I'm gonna create a very, very simple one to start us out. Let's do that, uh, that voice memos one since it's kind of a built-in feature. So if you hit plus here, we can hit add an action and you got a whole bunch of different choices here. You can call people, you can text people, you can get into scripting. Right now, let's just go to apps and find that voice memos app right here. You got a couple of different choices, listen to my most recent one or record a new voice memo. This is the one we wanna pick for quick capture. I don't want a show when run uh, confirmation here. And then I wanna give it a name. So let's just call it uh, record. We can come in here and I'll just choose, a, I don't know, this baby wearing a bow, cause why not? <laughs> uh, oh, and one thing I do wanna mention here. So 
I talked about this whole shortcuts process on my Twitter. In fact, if you want to follow me over at Tom Frankly, you might be able to see stuff like this before it gets on this YouTube channel, which takes a lot more production time. Uh, but if you add this to your home screen, now let's go ahead and do it right now. We'll call it new shortcut. Um, I don't really care what I call it because I don't really want it. I'm gonna add it to my home screen and then I'll hit done as well. So now it exists in our widget here. And if I tap it, it's gonna immediately start recording my voice, which is great, that's, that's the behavior we want. If we use the little home screen shortcut here, it works, but when I tap it, it's gonna pass through the shortcuts app first, which is just kind of annoying. I know it's not really that big of a deal. You get into it and it starts recording immediately, but it's just sort of inelegant. So if anybody at the Apple design team is watching this, I would love for this add to home screen feature to function just like the widget. Just do uh, no app pass through, just go right to the app that we want. So this one was easy. Let's create something a bit more complicated. How about opening a Notion page like my inbox right here? Here. Well, the cool thing about Notion is you can grab the link to basically any page that you want. So if we go here to the three dot menu, which you can also do on the desktop and hit copy link, that's gonna copy the link to your clipboard. And if we head back to shortcuts, what we can do is create a shortcut, adding an action in the web category called open URLs. And if we paste that URL right here, it's gonna open this page. And we're just gonna call that inbox. Um, again, I will give it a glyph. This one will be a play button. I don't know why, we'll let it be red. And now that's gonna be in our demo widget here. So if I click this, and there's our inbox. And this process is not unique to Notion. If you have an app that lets you copy a URL and that will launch the app using that URL, you can build a shortcut for it. So let's go ahead and do it with a Spotify playlist real quick. I've got my workout playlist here. Maybe I wanna to link to something different. Maybe I wanna to link to my Sunday study playlist. So let's find that. Here it is, copy the link to it, which is just gonna be done through share and copy link. And we can go right back to shortcuts, go like that, go to web, go to open URLs, paste that URL in, bada boom, hit done, hit done, and boom. Now we have a launcher for our study playlist. But of course, what I showed you at the beginning of this video is a little bit more complicated than what we've just built because on my true widget over here, when I tap these, I get a menu so I can choose several different places to go. So now I wanna show you how to construct that. And to do it, we're gonna get a little bit into the scripting side of shortcuts. Now this can get really, really complicated to the point where uh, people used to share shortcuts that would be full of like actual malware and Apple had to clamp down on people sharing shortcuts and you actually have to go into your settings and disable that protection if you want to download shortcuts from other people. We are not gonna get that crazy here. We're just gonna use a simple menu to give you some choices. So let's take this uh, inbox one right here, which I realize I just misspelled, and we'll open up the details of it. And instead of just doing this, we'll go ahead and cancel that out and add an action from the scripting menu. So you've got a ton of different options here. As you can see, you've got if and repeat and all kinds of weird programming stuff. But the first one is what we're after, choose from menu. This is just gonna give you a menu like you saw in my example. And since we're creating a Notion launcher, let's go ahead and make one for inbox and one for notes. So that's gonna give you two different choices here. And now you've got inbox and notes as little blocks here. If you hit the plus button, you can then go to our trusty little web category and hit open URLs. And then by dragging it, you can nest it underneath each of these choices. So we're gonna get two of these blocks, nest them like that, and then just go and grab our URLs like we did before. First we'll do inbox and we'll copy that link. And then we'll go over to our general notes home and copy that link as well. So now just to review, we've got a scripting tool that opens a menu, giving us the choice of inbox or notes. I can add more items if I wanted to. I can move these around if I want to. And then I've got a block that will open a URL based on the choice I make. So each one has its own unique URL. We'll hit done there and I'll leave it misspelled because I don't care. Now, if we go over to our launcher, if I hit this, I'm gonna have those choices. Hitting notes, we'll open up my notebook and hitting inbox, we'll open up my trusty handy dandy inbox. Now, one final tip I wanna share with you here is that you don't actually need to have all of the shortcuts you wanna use in a shortcut widget because you can say the name of the shortcut to Siri like so, DM Tony. 
and boom, there is my DM with Tony. So you can use this trick to easily launch shortcuts that don't even exist in this widget. Just make sure that you name them something that's easy to remember and easy to say. And speaking of things that are easy to say, if you want an article version of this video with some references for the shortcuts that we just built, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com slash shortcuts, which should hopefully be easy to remember, not least of which because I have a fairly easy to remember domain name for my personal website. And not only does that make the reference easy for you to get to, but ever since I built this website, back in college, it's made it easy for job recruiters and other people to find my portfolio and to contact me, which is why if you don't currently have your own domain name for your portfolio website, you should go over to Hover and get it for yourself. Hover has hundreds of different extensions to choose from, ranging from your .coms and .mes, which are great for portfolio websites, but they also have lots of more fun ones like .lol or even .blog. And once you have your domain name, they also have a couple of really cool features that can help make that domain even more useful. Number one, they've got an email feature so you can create a very professional looking email address for yourself like thomas at collegeinfogeek.com a little bit more professional than a gmail or a yahoo or a hotmail and they also have a connect feature which lets you easily hook your domain up to website builders and even online store builders so once again if you want to get 10 percent off of your domain name purchase and make sure that you get your domain name before somebody else takes it and steals the rug right out from under your feet go over to hover.com slash thomas frank and grab that domain also if you enjoyed the video hitting that like button is a great way to tell the YouTube algorithm that this video isn't complete and utter garbage and maybe it should show it to somebody else once in a while. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> uh, you can subscribe right there. If you haven't done so already, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos we have coming out. Last but not least, I'm gonna have a playlist of other videos here on tech videos I've done. So if you want to learn how to set up your home screen or make your phone a little bit less distracting, check those out or check out my music channel right here or don't do any of this and go buy a cooler line a statue that I have right here because as always I can't tell you what to do I'm not your dad